Um, so easy last night was the big night. I, I went home, like I left here at like 7.30. I got home about 8 o'clock. I, I immediately watched the um, Netflix documentary on the Malice at the Palace, which we will talk about coming up uh, later on in the show. Yeah. And then I ended it literally right at 9 o'clock, and I was so able perfect. to watch uh, Cade versus Jalen Part 1. What's your take on what you saw last night? It was everything. It came as advertised, man. Like, the intensity. Like, the fact that, like, an NBA preseason game, 9 o'clock's prime time still, right, for ESPN. It took prime time television, you know what I'm saying, on ESPN. Like, and it delivered, too. Like, nowadays era, these guys are, like, high-fiving, like, laughing after games, exchanging jerseys and stuff like that. It was none of that. These guys want to smoke. And I don't think, and I may have missed it. I tried to watch some watch film, I guess you call it, to see if they shook hands after the game. Did they dap up after the game? I don't. I did. I didn't. I guess now that I think about it, I didn't really see that this, at all. No. This is a thing, man. Like it delivered, man. Like we always hype up these things, and like after the games, they're always hugging and like you know laughing. And Fish loves it when they they share a gold medal and hug each other. No, these guys want smoke. These guys both look like they could be stars, and we're gonna watch them play against each other for years to come. And I'm I'm pumped for it. I'm here for it. What What about you, Andrew? Everything we looked for. It was really hyped. It went back and forth, back and forth, and that's what I loved about the game. And then what Easy said, it we bring back those rivalries. Like yeah. back in the day, like the Bad Boys Pistons, they were not friends of Michael Jordan. They were not friends of Larry Bird. Like these are the things that all that like it's good how they're all friends and everything, but at the same time, a guy like Yannick, for example, he has no friends in the offseason. So having this new sense of rivalry in the NBA, it's great to see it. It's finally great to see. It, it was hyped and it delivered. That's what I liked. Yeah, who do you think had the better game? That's that that I was like conflicted with honestly up until today. Um, edge wise, if I'm being completely honest with you, I I have to go with Jalen Green. Um, you know, just because the argument we've always had as the Cade supporters is, you know, he's gonna win you games. He's gonna win you games. Well, guess what? <laughs> Last night, Jalen Green put up the numbers and he won the game. Now, with that said, one on one when they met up with each other, when Cade was guarding, you know, Jalen and Jalen's guarding Cade, vice versa. K got the better of him. Yeah, for K, sure. K had my man reaching for air. K, K broke his ankles, you know what I'm saying? And he, put, he bodied him up. He even blocked him. Took his cookies. Like, K was bullying him out there. But for all the argument's sakes that we made, you know, that winning is important, and I, I have to stick to that principle, Jalen won the game. Okay. Well, that, when I watched that game yesterday, I, what I saw in Cade was an on-the-court co- on coach, right? Yeah. He, um, I didn't see him trying to take over the game. What I did was see him try to get other players in the proper positions to win. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of he could have had a lot more assists if these guys could have hit some damn buckets yesterday. Oh goodness, but man. take that away. I don't think Cade was out there trying to be the lead dog. I thought Cade was out there trying to help everybody else get going. And even with that, he had 20 points. You know, he had three steals. He had a couple blocks, a yeah. couple assists. You know, all the, he filled up the stat sheet in every possible statistic category. And then to your point, when him and Jalen were one on one, Cade dominated. Oh, yeah. I mean, you saw it on the crossover when he had to break in his oh, ankle. Yeah. You saw it on the block. You saw it on the steal. Like, he had his number. One on one, Kate is a much better player. One on one, though, in a team environment, Jalen Green is a much better scorer. Yeah. But overall, team basketball, I'm taking Kate a hundred times out of a hundred. Even what I saw last night, and I lo- I like Jalen Green's yeah. game. Like I gained more respect for Jalen Green last night than his. Me game. too, man. Like the, the thing is, like you you can't allow the word bust into the conversation when you speak in these guys' names after these performances, because like it's just. It's it's outlandish at this point. You could maybe have the opinion that Jalen's better, sure. Like you know, stick to that opinion, but don't don't include the word "bust" in that conversation because that's just that's absurd. No, yeah. Cade is delivered, and so did Jalen. They're yeah. stars. They're going to be stars. And you're stupid if you say "bust" at this point. And yeah. I can't believe people are panicking over two summer league games. And yeah. honestly, like Cade has looked fundamentally sound, and that's what we want out of him. And I loved how much of a vocal leader he was on the court. They had him mic'd up so we could hear him talking to different people, hyping up other teammates. And that's what you want. You want the floor general. You want somebody that is going to push everybody else on the team to be better and take a back seat when he could. I thought Doris Burke brought up an interesting stat last night as well when he was talking or she was talking about when he played top 10 teams, he averaged like 23 points a game. Below top 10 teams, like 10 to 20, he averaged about 20 points a game. And then like uh, any team outside the top 25, he only averaged about 18 points a game. Now some may look at that as what the hell, this guy can't score against bad teams but he does really well. I loved her take of maybe those games she was just letting other dudes eat. 
No, for sure, man. Like, and that's how he was too. Like last night, earlier on, after he hit, the, or he that three, the early three, the first shot of the game for him at least, he was sharing the ball. It's not this. It's not his fault. Everyone else is wearing ten seventeen Waka Flocka Brick Squad jerseys. <laughs> like I don't know what the hell was going on. Man, he should have way more assists last night. Yeah, we like, could not hit a three to save yeah. our lives. And I'm only going with Jalen in this topic just because of I've been arguing. The principle of my arguments have been winning, right? Like, and I, so I have to stick to that. Otherwise, I'm, I look like a fool. But like, don't get me wrong, like. Cade was was sunning him. You know what I'm saying any chance that he had, and you know, obviously we missed a lot of shots too. Yeah, well, um, if you missed what Jalen Green said in the post game, he said he felt like he was the number one pick, and <laughs> he's gonna be running his mouth. That's one thing we know about Jalen Green is this is his mo right here. Yeah, this guy loves to run his mouth. Well, on the other side, you're used to battling with with Cade. You were even teammates with him. But what was it like going up against him for the first time as pros? Uh, it was fun. He's a good player. He battled back. Um, yeah, I mean, I have respect for him. So that's the reason we come on the court and we're going to battle it every time. So it was a good game overall. I mean, we know you have respect for him, but you've made it known that you felt like you're the best prospect in this draft. Yeah. How big has your chip been playing here in Las Vegas? Uh, my chip been super big. It started at draft night when I got drafted number two. Um, I felt I was number one. But, I mean, it's just the work I got to put in. I can't. I got to keep the chip on my shoulder from where I'm from. My family installed it into me, so I'm just keeping it better every day. I can't. I can't knock him for that, though, because, like, if, if I'm in Houston right now and I'm rooting for Rockets, like, that's what you want to hear. Well, listen, if you love the Jordan documentary and you love the well, – and I took that personal, like, you got to love that because exactly. it's the same damn thing. And, exactly. no, I'm not saying he's Jordan. God, please don't say that I said he's Michael Jordan. I, I did not say that, but that's the mentality you need to be great. You you put yeah. those things in the back of your mind. Anybody who's ever crossed you, anybody who's ever passed you over, anybody who's ever doubted you, you make a mental note of it, and then you go get them. Yeah, like I said, you, you can you can say that Jay, like your opinion could be that Jalen Green is better. I don't agree with it, but that could be your opinion. But as long as you don't call Cade Cunningham a bust, right? That's all I care about. Or either one of them at this stage, they're they're going to be stars. And also, you know, Jalen had to be kind of humble after the game because once you get crossed up like this, you you can't go on. Houston up by six. Cunningham staring down Green, the number two pick. Oh, he took his ankles there and knocked down the three. Oh, he got a little bit of smoke delivered there by the number one pick. He's got ten. Mark, this is my guy, Uncle Kurt. I wish you guys could see his face right now. I don't know if you can on the like little shoulder shot or not, but his face he's making right now—that's the exact face I made. <laughs> but I was like, oh, I was freaking out. Yeah, our chat lit up when that play happened. That's exactly what we tuned in for. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like. How many times, again, like Michigan and Cowboys, like on national media, this this kind of stuff is like overhyped. These guys delivered. And not only did they deliver, this thing's going ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. I, who, who was the guy announcer last night? Do you know? Oh, Mark Jack, Jack, or, uh, Gus Johnson. It wasn't Gus Johnson. It was oh, definitely I, not Gus Johnson. I can't think of his name. I, I, I don't know. I know, he kept I know trying his face. To sound I don't know his name. Like, he kept trying to sound like he was the coolest dude in the room. Like, he kept <laughs> dropping these little one-liners and, you know, referencing hip-hop culture. And He's talking about like, buying uh, Doris some buffs. Yeah, it yeah, just sounded so again. awkward <laughs> last night. But he was talking about buffs. He couldn't even, like, describe them. He's like, oh, they're from Detroit. They're a thing. Like, he, like, tried to went on and on about them. He's like, he can't even do it. He couldn't even pronounce them or anything. Right. It was weird. The Cartier. The Bucks. Cartier. <laughs> What's up, Fish? I believe it's Mark Jones. That was Mark Jones last night? I think night? that's who it was. He was trying his damnedest to seem cool, and it was not working out. Like, I, I hate when guys do that. He was dropping, like, oh, he's going to mess around and get a triple-double. Remember Ice Cube said that? And it's like, dude, just, well, just chill, man. You'll love watching him because he does a lot of ESPN games. Does so he? A, yeah, he does a lot of I NBA on ESPN. Name. I know his face. I just don't know his name. Yeah, well, yeah. I'd prefer to have Gus Johnson back like we had two games ago. Uh, that That's my man right there. He's all right. Can I say last, what last night, though, about Caden and his leadership? When was the last time we saw that out of a piston? It's been nope. a long time, yeah, uh, honestly. Long time. And I, out of a rookie, I, I, that's what forever. I was thinking the whole time. And forever, you know, ever. he was—he's been so unselfish. <laughs> and that's the one thing I wish he was a little more aggressive, like each of these games. But he loves playing team basketball, right? He, he then that's the thing. He's—he just Cade. He plays the way he wants to play, and he's not going to care what people think. And that's what I love about him. And he, and even his press conference, he always talks about we're improving. How is Killian improving? It's all about the team, the team, the team. And it's not just about himself, which I love about him. Right. I, I, I want to note this, too, though. And Jalen Green's victory, he had some help. My man is Josh Christopher. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and Sengun. 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 
21 points. I think he was like, I, I wrote it down actually. What was he? Uh, 21. 8 and 14. Get that one half court three. Yeah, all, four their, blocks. all their rookies look great, honestly. Like they, they did. Yeah. Like Kenyon Martin's son looked amazing yeah. last night, flying above the rim. Like that, that guy's great. Eight threes. Yeah, they, yeah. I hate to say they were the better team just because the fact that like the Piston squad is carrying three stars that we're going to carry into like our regular season like squad. Right. You know what I'm saying that kind of that kind of sucks. Well, see, but, last night another guy that had a big game, Luca Garza. He was five of six, had a huge run. You know, getting rebounds like he did the whole Dirk step back with his knee up, and we have his dad Frank Garza on the line, and we are going to talk to him next on the Woodward Sports Network. Frank, just make sure you turn your camera on, buddy, and we're ready to go. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. 